Welcome back, Vintage Gamers, to one of probably many more attempts at playing Atroxa Grand Unifier. If you're watching this on YouTube, you've probably already seen the video that came out on Tuesday uh, for those Switch Shatters, that is the future, uh, <laughs> and where I take uh, Atroxa and I just dissect every little bit about why I think this card is probably the best creature to cheat into play in Magic. I spent like 12 minutes on Voice of Vintage uh, just talking about what makes this card tick. Uh, and uh, it's basically every part of it <laughs> besides Death Touch. Um, so this is the latest, not the latest version of the deck that I've been uh, working on for the past couple of days. Uh, I have played so many leagues with this deck recently that I, I am wondering who am I? Why am I playing so many leagues of Magic? But uh, I've now lost uh, four consecutive trophy matches with this deck. 4-0 <laughs> into 4-1. And I'm really impressed. I think the deck does extremely powerful things. Um, we are playing a show-and-tell uh, Atroxa deck with secondary a way to cheat Atroxa into play with Oath of Druids. And third way to cheat Atroxa into play with Flash. We also have a, uh, uh, a show-and-tell Omniscience plan with uh, Emrakul as well. Um, and basically we abandoned the natural order plan because the green creatures were just not really accelerating uh the deck in the way i wanted it to whereas oath of druids and uh off color moxen plus mana crypt really accelerate our deck and push us into a powerful uh early game combo deck uh so i am still considering some things about this deck uh it's quite possible that this deck does not need the omniscience plan uh and then we could you know get things like Preordains number three and four, maybe we could get Force of Negation, uh, but Omniscience does solve some issues in the deck, things like uh, getting locked out by a Caracas, uh, there's just like a bunch of small things where Omniscience helps, Omniscience I've found have been very good in the mono-white matchup, very interestingly, um, uh, so you would have to do some amount of reconfiguring to cut Omniscience, and we, we, are, we are working on a deck similar to that uh, in, over here in this build. This build has only one Omniscience and no Emrakul, but we think have things like Yagmas Will, Extra Preordains, Strip Mine. So uh, I, I am considering some other ways to build this deck, but uh, I don't have any test matches with the other build yet. So I'm going to play this deck, which I've now played in <laughs> uh, five leagues uh, and, and to pretty solid results. So uh, the Omniscience does get boarded out a lot, especially when you're boarding in things like... Um, if you're playing against like an artifact-based combo deck, you're going to be bringing in something like these nine cards over here. Uh, and when you do that, you do need to find room to cut cards. And the best way to cut cards is Omniscient, seeing as most of the time when Atraxa resolves and you get your cards from her, you get a force and you basically lock up the game. So um, what else is interesting about this deck? I think Flash is probably the most interesting thing, something that the Discord brought up uh, early inside of um, our brewing process. Uh, playing Flash with Atraxa is actually just super powerful. It's almost like casting a little mini, you know, dig through time. Um, it's always, almost always refunds itself too. It's very frequent that you'll find another Atraxa off of your, uh, uh, first Atraxa trigger. So, um, the, the, the downside of like losing your Atraxa doesn't seem to come up too bad. And then there's always other things that could happen where you can like lose your Atraxa, but you get an Oath of Druids and you find a new way to, to cheat one into play. So... Um, yeah, yeah. I do think that, like, Omniscience Emrakul is a, is a powerful thing. It definitely adds to this deck's velocity, which is why I really like to have it in game one. Um, and it helps solve some issues that the deck has in, in, in closing games fast. Uh, but it's it's yet to be seen whether that is 100% required. So, I'm hoping this prelim will be a great showing, because I do think this card is really, really strong, and my first challenge with it did not go so well. So, uh, let's just get into round one. If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. All right, let's do it. One die roll, round one. Why does my thing keep going down here? I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, so this one has... Mm, interesting hand. I'm willing to try this hand. It has like some issues for sure, but it has some powerful things going on as well. 
it's definitely not like a hand I'm super excited about. For instance, if you didn't have this underground C, I think the hand would be quite bad, but. What I'm gonna do is just lead with a uh, time walk. Cause it opens us up to doing some really nice things with like ponder into show and tell, or um, there's a couple other lines or like get an oath and then be able to maybe ponder or brainstorm into a force, those kind of things. Oko. Interesting. I think I'd rather ponder. Ancestral and force. Interesting. How do I want to sequence though? I think I just want to take force for now, and then we'll look to see what happens with their opponent. <laughs> One of the uh, weird, nice parts about playing Omniscience is uh, it just pitches the blue. It's a blue card, pitches the force. <laughs> you don't really care that you lose it a lot. That's like something that's really, really nice about this deck is it's got a really nice blue count. All right, we got Ruby and what? What are you doing today, Purple Gambit? Sapphire, all right. And Ragavan with Ancestral on the top of our library. Uh, all right, well, let's, uh, let's cast Brainstorm in response here. We would not want our opponent to get a, uh, a Ragavan. So I think what I'll do is I'll just let them take the... Uh, I'm actually going to keep the Ancestral in my hand in case my opponent does something weird like not attack with Ragavan. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll put um, Mox and then Orchard on top. Or time walk. That's another reasonable thing to be thinking about for sure. I don't think I'm interested in a second orchard very much. Oh, well, now I guess I was interested in a second orchard if I can't play my green spells. A little awkward. What is that? Deathbreak Shaman? Interesting. Okay. All right, my opponent only has three cards left in their hand. Um, I'm just going to cast this Ancestral on my turn. I think it's fine. I need to start progressing this game. If this gets forced... Oh, wow. I've been so punished, haven't I? I guess I should have gotten rid of the Mox instead of the Orchard. I didn't really consider Wasteland here. Um... But it seems like that was a pretty large play mistake. The good news is I do have a misstep for the Ragavan, but I, I you know, I, I have a clock in play with Mana Crypt and Spirit Token plus uh, Death Ray Shaman. So I definitely got immediately punished for the way I ordered my brainstorm, which is not ideal. I think this game would be wow. I think this game would have just been completely over on the spot if I had ordered the other way. Because I think the Oath would just resolve and they would lose on the spot. I feel like I've been playing so badly recently, just not considering things. I'm just letting this happen. I don't think this is worth forcing. We want to make sure that our oath resolves, and if we get wastelanded, we won't be able to like flusterstorm or anything, anyways. 
I do just feel like I am making so many small play mistakes. <laughs> they will not be casting this Oath of Druids. I can tell you that much. But the good news is I didn't want to draw Oath of Druids, so... The bad news is I have a Mana Crypt in play, and we all know how that goes for me. All right. This game's going to be very tight at the end here. Uh, because my opponent is attacking for two. Uh, and what is this? I don't like this play from them. I don't like this play at all from them. They're going to like hard cast negation here. This is such a bad play. They should they should just eat uh they should let oath resolve and and go for my life total I think um my opponent should have eight here yeah I think they should have double activated their death ray shaman I don't like this play whatever this play is I don't like it <laughs> yeah so now I get to fluster this force uh fluster this negation force the ragavan. Go to six. Go to four. I can still die, unfortunately, but. <sighs> Time walk. That's unfortunate as well. So what is better to keep in my hand, Omniscience or Oko? Oko technically gains me three life. So probably Oko. Omniscience might win the game, though, so it's a little hard to say. I mean, this game might just come down to this Mana Crypt flip here. Uh Oh, no, I'm actually dead on the spot because they drew a land. I, I, I was so punished for my brainstorm in this game. It's incredible. Oh, wait, no, they attacked with the Deathrite Shaman. What? Opponent. Oh, no. My opponent is playing worse than me, but... Okay, well, now it's a Mana Crypt flip. I mean, it's going to be probably a couple Mana Crypt flips. I could, I could also... I have a 1 in uh, 4 chance of hitting Emrakul, which is really bad for me. So, that is a kind of a, a downside to uh, playing the Emrakul in your deck, is you can sometimes hit it when you don't want to. I did win the flip. Am I going to lose the Emrakul coin toss? Because I did lose an Atraxa from the top of my library to Ragavan. Also, because of this Forbidden Orchard, the Oko is not as appealing on the plus two... Unless my Atraxa hits a land. I hit the Atraxa. I lost another Omniscience. All right, well, let's see what Atraxa gets us. I hit the Show and Tell and the Black Lotus and another Atraxa. I wish I had kept the Omniscience over the Oko. We would have probably won this game. But we can still win this game, so... Uh, Tropical Island, Black Lotus, Atraxa, uh, Oko. Do I want to get Merchant Scroll or Show? I guess I kind of have to take Show. I don't have to take Show because I could technically hard cast Atraxa. What does Merchant Scroll find me? Like nothing, right? Uh, because Ancestral is gone and Flash is gone. If we hadn't milled Flash, then Merchant Scroll is this one more mana than Show. Okay, so let's do Show. So this is Atraxa, Lotus. Uh, unfortunately, Magic Online is still bugged, so I'm writing these out for my opponent. Atraxa, Lotus, Oko, Show, Trop. I guess I get Fluster as well, right? Uh, yeah, so six cards, done, draw, pearl. So, I don't think there's any reason to hold this, this, this. So we do have the ability to gain three life with our Oko. 
We don't have the ability to sacrifice Crypt, but we could also uh, Crypt target our Oko. We do need to make sure we gain two life so that uh, we don't get death righted. We can't time walk because my deck doesn't have a Yog Will in it right now. So I could play Oko and Oko. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could play Oko, turn my Mana Crypt off, and crack my food. And that should just stabilize me. Oh, sorry. Um... Or just Elk Shaman, that might even... Well, I think that's worse. Well, Elk Crypt and Elk Shaman is probably best. Yeah, it's probably best. So this is going to be blue and blue and colorless. So let's do that. Let's do Oko and plus Oko on... Deathrite Shaman, Oko, and plus Oko on Mana Crypt. And then this is a Flying Death Touch Lifelinker, and I still have Flusterstorm. I like this. We get to do another Oath Trigger, and then we have Show and Tell as well. I think I like this line the most. It's a nice reason to have Okos in the deck. They do some really weird, like, uh, utility. If we win this game, it is obviously because our opponent messed up, but we really should have just won this game if I sequenced the Mox and the Forbidden Orchard in the other way. Uh, can't do anything about this Narset, but it doesn't do too much to us. Even if they find a Lightning Bolt, we do have a Flusterstorm. We are dead to Renin 6, but uh, they can't cast Renin 6, so we're not dead to Renin 6. Because they play bad lands. <laughs> All right. Uh, we snuck a win there in what I would consider to be a slight misplay on my side of the table. This, uh... Ooh, I wonder if we're even allowed to do this attracts activation. Uh, where are my creatures? Just out of curiosity. Do we die? Oh, no, they're down here. So we would hit a new Atraxa with eight cards in our deck. Was there another Omniscience? Or did I do I lose all my Omnisciences there? Just out of curiosity. There would not be another Omniscience. I would have to do that calculation. Um, I don't think any of it matters, but it's just kind of interesting to think about. I'm not playing like a Gaia's Blessing in my deck because I'm playing five Oath targets. <laughs> okay, so my opponent is playing uh, four color uh, Deathrite Shaman Walkers. Uh, I would say we're already pre pre boarded for the matchup. Uh, my 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 sideboard is mainly dedicated to um, anti graveyard cards, anti artifact cards, and anti combo cards. Um, I think we're interested in playing a, a snow covered forest. To beat their wasteland uh, plan. Oh, we could discard Emperor the hand size. True, true, true. Uh, I think we're interested in a negation, but I'm not like super interested in a negation. And we could be interested in a fluster storm. Um, things we would not be interested in. It's not the best omniscience matchup because they're probably playing vigors and besages. So it might just be like a board omniscience out. Uh, it's not they're not playing like Caracas or anything like that. So this is probably just three omnisciences for three cards that do something in the matchup. Uh, yeah, I'm down for that. Okay. I mean. I think that game could have been a little hard if we had hit not hit Black Lotus, but um, 
If we had not kept Oko, we could have uh, show and tell omniscience, but we didn't have a way to find Emrakul. Lots of things to think about. I'm um, definitely okay with this hand. doesn't really do a whole lot, but I think that's okay in this matchup. A lot of this matchup is making sure that you don't get, like, uh, strip mined out of the game. Oh, Ragavan. I like uh, non-dash Ragavan. It's going to really help us with our Oath of Druids. I'm uh, just going to see what's in their hand before we make any plays. Their hand is Force of Negation, Time Walk, Second Ragavan, Land, Land. I would not be casting Ragavan. Oh, you guess you get the time walk, huh? Interesting. Super interesting then. Uh, yeah, I mean, this could go really bad for us, I guess, because of the time walk. Emerald Merchant Scroll. Hmm. don't feel like those cards are what we were looking I mean it's not bad to get a merchant scroll I don't think this is what we want I'm just gonna bottom these time walk uh any reason to play or hold ruby I don't think there's any reason to play ruby Yeah, I mean, this this monkey could definitely go the distance. Like, Time Walk is a card that really makes these, you know, more modern playables strong. Uh, time Walk with Ragavan is quite good. Uh, time Walk with uh, Urza Saga is really annoying as well. So my opponent gets to Time Walk here and Vamp for Ancestral, which is uh, obviously a great hit. Uh, Vamp's not a card that I really wanted to draw, so, like, there's there's that there's the solace in that, but it's not, not a great one. <laughs> So now my opponent gets to get Ancestral Recall, I assume. That, that's got to be exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously a good hit, right? Mm, they hit a Forbidden Orchard, which I definitely would have been interested in. All right, time to see what they do now. So there's the Polluted Delta. So we know that their hand is a uh, Vampiric Tutored card, Ragavan Negation. It's going to be Ancestral. Lash is an interesting card here. I really like it. Uh, I do think that I'm just going to lead on Time Walk, though, and see how opponent reacts. Okay. I'm going to just utilize my mana if they want to resolve an Ancestral. I really had no way to beat an Ancestral anyways, so... Sure. All right, it's going to be a tough game. Atraxa Forest Oath. So we've got tons of bait for this negation. Or not bait for this negation. We have great cards. Unfortunately, I want to keep Oath, but I don't want any of these other cards. So I actually think I might have to just shuffle this Ponder. It's pretty bad for us to draw a Snow-Covered Forest here. And the second Atraxa is not really ideal. Well, I just don't think Oath or Flash is going to... I, I know one of them is not going to resolve. I just don't know how many are not going to resolve. And we have to draw two of these cards because we have a Time Walk turn. I guess I would rather draw second Atraxa than Snow-Covered Forest. I mean, if they have Pyro, we're just ruined, right? I, I, this is probably... It's probably a keep, but I just think we're going to lose if we keep this. It's really unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could definitely do that. I don't know if that's correct, though, because Flash can beat Flusterstorm if I play it first. So... I kind of think it makes more sense to just lead with Flash... To just to get rid of the Flusterstorm option. Oh, are they going to hard cast negation? I think that'd be good for us. I mean, it's bad for us if they have like a Besaidu or a Nature's Claim or something, but... 
Interesting. Okay, so that's been negated. Well, let's try to resolve the oath. Resolve an oath. Well, let's see what happens. I don't. I got nothing left, friend. I did. I drew um no fetch lands and no orchard, so I haven't been able to cast this demonic tutor. Well, you have to think ancestral in this deck is like. It's not the end-all be-all, right? Like, my opponent's deck is full of these Planeswalkers that are, you know, a variable, varying levels of, of playability. Though I did keep in the Emrakul, which I really regret now. <laughs> um... Because I think I could just die to the varying levels of playability Planeswalkers here. Maybe the Emrakul doesn't get Pyroblasted, and that actually saves me. It's totally possible, I guess. All right, well, that's an Atraxa. That let me... Okay, well... I hit uh, lots of good stuff here. Uh, okay, so Atraxa's in play. I'm going to take Black Lotus. I'm going to take another Atraxa, or am I? I don't think I'm taking this next Atraxa. What? Let's see. Uh, I am taking Force, and I am taking Show, and I am taking Trop. That is not the land we were looking for. Almost wish I had Omniscience in my deck still. Maybe I was wrong to take out Omniscience. Let's see. The biggest consideration is, do I leave an Atraxa at the bottom of my deck? One, two, three, four, five... I think I'm going to leave it. So this is just going to be Lotus, Force of Will, Show, Trop. I boarded out three of the Omniscience. So the Omniscience is gone. It's in the graveyard. Uh, I believe it's random order. Yeah. Okay, so I do not have Time Walk either. Uh, I really think I need Yawgmoth's Will in this deck. I think I need Yawgmoth's Will in this deck. It looks really important. No, 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 the Omniscience is gone. It's in my graveyard. This is why I don't want to cut Omniscience from my deck, though. But I guess I would have Omniscience if I Demonic Tutored for it. No, I don't need I don't need Underworld Breach or anything like that. I think the answer is Yogwell is, is what should be in my deck. Um, so I just have to figure out how to proceed from here. And the answer is... I don't know, because I can't time walk. So I need to make sure this doesn't die. Um, what is the best way to make sure this doesn't die? I don't think I want to cast Show and Tell. Unfortunately, I don't I can't cast this Atraxa right now because I have a, a, a ruby and no uh extra, I need one more color of mana. So maybe the best answer is we start with brainstorm. That's an ancestral recall. Um do I am I able to fetch? Why would we DT for Emrakul? I mean, I think we're going to get burned out is what I'm worried about. And maybe that's not true. but I can't tap this Orchard either, though. I still think I have to keep Orchard. I think if I show and tell Emrakul, that leaves me open to some bad things. I'm really not sure about show and tell Emrakul here. I'm really unsure. They could also still have some other things here. Uh, I, I'm just really worried about getting bolted out. My opponent has a Minx and Boo, so they can sack this Boo and deal me four damage. If I fetch or something or give them too many attackers, there's like a lot of ways that things can go badly here. Maybe I should have just gotten an Oko. What if I had Oko'd this boo?
I mean, my, my thing is a blue card. He can get Pyroblasted. Uh, I, I'm not as uh, I'm not as sure as everyone else is here, but we'll see what happens. I think this is a fine line. I think this is the line I have to go for, but I'm not 100% convinced it's, it's going to be the best line. We'll see, they only have two cards in hand, but after they boo, they're going to have four cards in hand. All right, let's see what happens. Well, isn't is it an elk? So it doesn't deal damage. Oh, oh no, no! It's uh, the the deal damage part is the not the hamster part. That's the draw cards. Yeah, I, I think chat thinks this game is over, but I think there's like so many ways we can die. Uh, the thing that really went wrong in this game was my my oath mill, and I, I think the answer is I should have a yog will in my deck, and maybe we need to reconfigure sideboarding and not board out as many omniscience as we did. Well, we can't we can't elk the the hamster because then it will be a, a like a six six and it'll deal six damage to us. But they don't get to draw cards, so maybe. I mean, I think we can win this game, but I think there's a lot of ways we can lose this game. Oko on... So are they going to Oko on a Traxa or on Emrakul? Uh, I, I think I can't play around Bolt. Oh, let me draw cards first. I have negations, right? I have a single negation. I kind of want to bait a counter of some kind on this Ancestral if I can get one. I drew a negation. That was a good draw. I don't think All right. Let's expose myself a little bit here. Okay. They've drawn how many cards this turn? 9. They don't have a time walk, though, right? That's the big thing. They don't have a time walk. Time walk is real bad for me. It's Bolt. I think it's Bolt or, or nothing. I don't know if they'll have a Bolt in their deck. They don't. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, I'm not sure we, we should have boarded so many Omniscience out. But maybe it was just, like, a little unlucky to hit the Omniscience. Uh, Pyro would have won. Doesn't win, right? Because we still have uh, Emrakul block and get a new Atraxa. I don't think Pyro wins. But, uh, yeah. Okay, let's think about this a little bit more. I really want Yogwill in this deck. I really want Yogwill. No, there was one more Atraxa because I chose not to take an Atraxa off an Atraxa. So there was one more in my deck and it was shuffled from the DT, I believe. So I just got to think about this some more. Good round one, though. All right, now we're moving on to round two. We're up against Juju. And we know Juju's most likely going to be on Squee. That's the deck they've been piloting recently to very high success rates. Um, I feel like I would keep this hand on if I knew my opponent was on any deck but Squee. Uh, this deck, this hand just doesn't look like it functions versus Squee. Squee, in game one, our, our plan is to just sneak a, an Oath or a Show and Tell through their, uh, through their defenses. Hope they don't have, you know, maybe if they can mulligan a little bit. 
We do know they are on Squee based on the double serum powder. Uh, the double serum powder revealed zero forces and zero mind break traps. One hollow one. I think I, I think I'm just gonna like this hand looks so good, but unfortunately my opponent's not playing real magic, so I I, I just have to mulligan this hand. It's so, so sad. Um, this hand is better. I think I'm just going to put the negation back. The negation does nothing in the matchup, so I would rather have the ability to like draw show and tell. So let's do that. Yeah, I just don't think two forces does anything. Unfortunately, if I keep a hand that that goes two forces against Squee, it's just it's going to be a, a massacre. <laughs> this deck, Squee is really rough uh, for the combo decks of the format. But at least this this one has a plan. Um, I think again, it will probably be too slow, but I, I I like it. If we do get an Atraxa or an Emrakul in play. We typically will always win. The Emrakul doesn't always win because, like, they could go really go really wide, but... An Atrax in play is quite good. Okay, they had no starting creatures and pitched no squeeze. That's a great sign for us. Uh, I'm going to just play this Misty so that I do not get Wastelanded. And we're going to play an Oath with Force back up. Um, that might not be good enough, but two Vigors gone is nice. Let's see. They chose to get rid of their second bazaar. They don't really need a second bazaar here. Um, they know we're not on a wastelands. So here is one root walla. They currently have a venge vine. So if they found one of their three remaining hollow ones, that's nine free power. It's nine free power. Um, will oath be fast enough versus nine free power with four haste? Um, at sixteen, it has to be a traxa, I think. Uh. Nine down to five down to four. Yeah, it has to be a Traxa. I can't hit my Emrakul. Yeah, unfortunately, my opponent's deck I would categorize as uh, not fun. <laughs> it is what it is. It's really fun to play against this deck if you're the if you're playing like Wastelands. <laughs> All right, so there's a Force. Here's a Force. Do you have a third Force? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we lose. Uh, can we win this game if we draw show and tell? We can. We can win this game if we draw show and tell. So we don't always, we don't automatically lose here. Um, but this is just the, the nature of my opponent's deck. It's put nine free power in play with double force back up. All right, so we're on four show and tells. A show and tell does put us Omniscience Atraxa, which does look winning. So we also have Ancestral into, into some plays as well. Time walk is not bad. Yeah, so they play four Force of Will, four Force of Negation, four Force of Vigor, and four Mind Break Trap. It's, a, it's an absurd deck. <laughs> it's an absolutely absurd deck. Uh, just plays all zero cost things. All right, again, show and tell. That's a Force, unfortunate. We almost stole this game, to be honest. We had a legitimate chance of stealing this game. But I, I think this is a quite hard matchup. I would say it's one of our worst matchups. Um... The good news is we've got Tabernacles and we have Ley Lines, um, which are very good cards. And I don't think our, our base combo is particularly bad. Uh, we do do a, a powerful thing fast. Negation doesn't do anything against them because they don't play any non-creature spells on their turn. Um, Mental Misstep doesn't do anything against them. Oko doesn't really do anything against them. Flash would have been a reasonable draw. Fair, fair. This is, we had some draws. We had some. We had a good. We had a good amount of draws for sure. Um, I just don't think omniscience is necessary in this matchup because like an attracts I should just win. Uh, I don't know how to take that many cards out though. I guess we could play a hollow vine, a hollow one protection. I think I'm just gonna make sure we hit Atraxa. I don't think there's any reason to put the Emrakul in. Uh, the, I guess a reason to put the Emrakul in, so like, something that could go wrong if we go this direction is Caracas, because I, I, I chose not to play Caracas Hate. Uh, maybe I'll keep an Omniscience in, I don't think an Omniscience is going to do it. Mm, maybe I have to keep Omniscience in because of the way I built this deck. Yeah, let's keep in an Omniscience and in the Emrakul. 
think that makes sense. I don't really think I want to deal with a hollow one. I think I just want to win. Uh, I, I do sometimes show in Omnish, uh, Emrakul. It happens for sure. Mm, this is an interesting hand, huh? Interesting living wish type with Emrakul. Hmm. There are definitely upsides to having the Emrakul. I thought that Emrakul would be really bad, to be honest. Um, and it's not. It hasn't been really bad. It's been actually pretty passable. I've won a lot of games with just show and tell Emrakul, uh, oathing into Emrakul. Um, I, I was really concerned about the Emrakul, but uh, yeah. Traxa is from the newest set. Phyrexia all will be one. Well, we well in that game because of our life total and being on the draw, we had to uh, miss on the Emrakul on the oath. But um, it's that's not always the case. I think I'm going to probe my opponent. I could like go something crazy like Vamp uh, Lotus or any something like that, but I, I'm not going to do that. I don't think that makes sense against the Mindbreak Trap deck. I'd like to know what my opponent is doing, and then decide from there like if my opponent has a wasteland in hand i really can't afford yeah yeah traxa is a standard legal card it wasn't even a commander card which is all crazy because it is just gonna dominate it's not gonna maybe not dominate but it's gonna be a, a role player not a role player what, a, what word i'm looking for it's gonna be a staple in all constructed magic i think it's already uh it won the standard challenge right or at least top aided so they do have a wasteland they do have a bizarre they do have a force they do have a squee we did draw an Ancestral, though. Interesting. How do we play this out? I can get Basic Island. I just, basic Island looks so bad here. I think I'm going to expose the Underground Sea and Ancestral on their upkeep. If they Wasteland me, I should come out pretty far ahead, I would think. They're just snap forcing this. Are they going to just wasteland me then? I mean, I think this is fine. I don't think I care about this ancestral too much. I do kind of need a creature in play for the oath, I guess. The best part about Atraxa is I don't think you always need to cheat it in play. Seven mana is pretty castable. It's not six mana, but it's also not eight mana. <laughs> Uh, I talk about it a little bit in my video, but um, six mana is like historically where the low cost oath creatures that you can sometimes cast come in or that you can cast come into play. Eight mana are the really powerful oath creatures that you can't uh, cast very often, but seven mana is a little bit of a sweet spot. So I've, I've done a bunch of casting of the, of the Atraxas. Oh, I, I think that's all the cards I knew about. So they have three cards that I don't know about. Interesting. So, I think we're just going to resolve the Oath, even though they don't have a creature yet. The game gets worse. It's harder to resolve an Oath the longer this game goes due to the Squee. And what we can do is, like, vamp for a Forbidden Orchard, maybe. I don't think I closed out Wasteland early, right? There's a Wasteland over here. I can, I mean... I, I don't know if they have, you know, more, but we, we, all the cards that we've seen are gone, I believe. Definitely think an oath is good here. If they force this oath, I don't care because I have, so I have a backup plan. Yo, what's up, Jarvis? Hope you had a good time. Welcome everyone, we're playing the Vintage Prelim. New Vintage Prelims on Monday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, which is really fun. And they're usually pretty fast, something like two and a half hours. Uh, okay, Bizarre Activation. So, depending on what my opponent does here, and what we see pitched, 
I think what we're gonna do is vamp for an orchard. <laughs> sure, wasteland. So Squee and Master of Death in our opponent's deck act as a card advantage engine to offset the card disadvantage of Bazaar of Baghdad, turning it into a, a, a zero cost controlling tempo deck. Yeah, I'm gonna vamp here. Um, and then I'm gonna get an orchard. They did pitch Caracas. Wow, that is. Oh, I can't imagine that that. What could be in their hand if they're pitching Caracas? Caracas has got to be the single best card they could have here. Wild. That's wild. They must have force. Hmm. Oh, they should know my deck list. They were just in chat within the last match. <laughs> I also post my my entire deck list on Twitter every time. So, all right. So the vamp resolves. I'm just gonna get a forbidden orchard here. Um, I'm gonna play the forbidden orchard and pass. And my opponent is gonna fortunately gonna get back a master of death and a squee. But. I guess my opponent could respond with this uh, a noxious revival and put like a land on top of my library. That's what they're gonna do. Ah, oh, nice play, nice play. Very nice play. Hmm. I can force it. It exposes me to their last two cards being any kind of force combination. Negation, blue card, vigor, green card, blue card, force. It's not that bad, because I have a backup oath. But I, like I said, the longer this game goes, the more we're losing. Because uh, they have the double squeeze and yard. No, I, I think, like I, like I said before, I think like... Um, I mean, it gets better than this. It's like if they if they killed the you know if my, if our vamp resolved and we had a forbidden orchard and they went for end of turn vigor like all those those things are better. But um, like I said, I think this game is just uh it's lost if it goes too long. So we can ponder for orchard. <laughs> oh, do we have a ponder? You are correct. We could have pondered for orchard. Um. What does that really get saves us a force for later, possibly? Oh, you're right. We don't have a mana, though. <laughs> so we can't ponder Forger. Oh, they have another revival? Oh, okay. All right. My opponent bought uh, a turn here. You're right. We could not have pondered. Chat got me with that one. <laughs> All right. My opponent got back two squeeze here. Uh, looks bad for us. I would say we are probably losing this game. The current rate. They still do need to find Vigor green card, though. So... There's like some upside. I can't play this second oath because Force of Vigor is broken. Um, which buys them additional time. Not much, not much I can do about it. So if I get to the, go to my next turn, if I get to go to their turn, then we are going to get an oath trigger. It doesn't mean we're going to win the game. My opponent does play Snapbacks and maybe more Caracas. You can play more than one Caracas. Um, we'll just see what happens. All right, we got to their turn. They are unfortunately going to go back up to five cards, six cards, up to eight cards, down to five cards. They could probably put some Venge Vines into play here. Um, I still am not sure we're guaranteed this win, but the fact that we took Emrakul out, so it's only Atraxa, it does look good for us. All right, so we're going to mill over with our Oath. We milled over 
half of our live. Wait, I thought we took the Emrakul out. Oh, I guess we didn't take the Emrakul out. Oh, but they can't, they can't snap back this though, right? So maybe it's fine. They can't snap this, right? They can only Caracas this. Where are our Atraxas? Not in the top half of our deck, I guess. I don't know how many Caracas that Juju... I don't know how many Caracas Juju is on these days. But this is a one-hit kill, so maybe it's just good. Uh, once again, there's no upside here of me casting Oath. So... Pass? I mean, I, they have double Vengevine in the yard, but they would have to do a lot of damage to me here. They would need all four Vengevines, and... That would still be one damage short. Oh, yeah, they could just Noxious Revival there, Caracas. True. They have a fourth one of those. I didn't even consider that. It's, like, a little sus for them to, like, rely on Caracas because of Atraxa triggers. But I think I'm wrong. I don't think I'm supposed to board Omniscience out because I don't have good answers to Caracas in this build. Like, my idea was I didn't need answers to it because typically if you, like, continue to get Omniscience, or if you continue to get uh, Atraxa triggers, you end up just, like, building a huge crazy hand and you just show and tell an Omniscience and play it all out. So... That was the way, it, and that has been how it's worked so far in testing. That's true. Maybe that when they initially discarded Krakus, they thought they might get it back because they kept Noxious Revivals, but then they went for the way to beat the, uh, the, 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 the Vampiric. All right, I mean, I still... Think if my opponent returns, yeah. So even if they return all four Venge vines here, okay. Wow. All right, we got a game. That's that's. I always take any game I can get versus Squee. So now we need to really reconsider. Do I really want to play with less omniscience here? I don't think so. I think I want to put more back in my deck. Maybe the answer is not four, but maybe two. They've shown us Caracas, and I currently, that Omniscience is my way of powering through Caracas. Like, uh, I have, in the other build, I have a Strip Mine and a Needle, I believe. This might just be, like, no Preordains. Like, what is Preordain doing for us here? I mean, they're on four Vigors, so it's, like, it's not great, right? <laughs> it's not great. Maybe we bring in this misstep for revival. Is revival that important? I didn't, I usually don't keep misstep for just revival... Uh, when I'm not playing a Wasteland strategy. I still don't think that's good. I'm just gonna put all the nonsense in my deck and I think it's fine. It's just, I, I've never really had time to preordain in this matchup, typically. Especially if I, like, lead on, uh, land, ley line. Let's just do this. I don't know the answer, though. So why is my... I guess I can just make this smaller. That makes the hand smaller, though. Does anyone know why this doesn't stay? I want to keep this up here. But I can't seem to get it to stay up here. Hmm. Uh... Unfortunately, I don't think this one does it. Even though it has a ley line, the land situation is quite poor. The action situation is quite poor. I'm going to mulligan this hand. So this Flusterstorm doesn't protect this ley line. And we're just going to end up getting beat by Wasteland Hollow one. So I think this is a mulligan. This happens to me a lot. <laughs> uh, opponent is also... They serum powdered. 
And they're keeping a six card serum powder. I'm going to mulligan again. Ah. <laughs> uh. This hand had a ley line. Maybe. I'm just going to mulligan again. Yep, that's my best hand by a large amount. That's my best hand by a, quite a large amount. <laughs> Turn shoe show and tell on the draw. I just don't think it's good here. No, they chose not to activate, huh? Uh, I don't even know if I'm supposed to play. I mean, London Mulligan's pretty broken. You got to just use it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. Playing around our one tab, or maybe just playing around Oath. I really don't want to get my jet. I think I can just pass. Maybe it's silly. I could draw Force, I guess. Oh, they have double Squee. Uh, we're doomed. Only if they have squeeze. Yeah, I, the game is over. <laughs> my opponent has. My opponent gets the faithless looting every turn. Well, I could just better than faithless looting. My opponent gets the better than faithless looting every turn for free. But again, my oath doesn't do anything if they don't have a creature in play. So, like, putting my oath into play right now doesn't really do anything. My opponent just has full ability to never play a spell here. They can just activate every turn, pitch three squeeze, and we lose. And that's what they're going to do, because they're really good at this game. <laughs> All right, so we need to draw a Forbidden Orchard and have our opponent have nothing. All right, well, I'm going to play it now. Now that I'm not exposing myself to a jet, or not exposing my jet. Uh, I am going to just get a forest, though. It's unfortunate that my second one was not a fetch as well, but... No, no, we're on the, we're on the, we lost the game because we mulliganed to four and our opponent played well. So like one of the biggest ways to beat the opponent's deck is to one, play a wasteland deck or two, have your opponent's deck collapse on itself due to its own inherent fail rate. That didn't happen and we don't play wastelands. So it's quite a tough matchup. Yep. There's uh two squeeze still and now a vengevine and a vigor pitching a vengevine. We didn't see a land from them, though, so it's possible they can still run into a tabernacle. I don't think the first hand was a keep, so. It just doesn't really win. We uh, That's not really the case, either. Like, my opponent hand opens with a, a vigor, and the hand does nothing. Especially when there's things like a, a hollow one in the format, so. I mean, it's really nice to keep a Leyline hand because you don't want to get Squeed out of the game, but... If the per first hand had Fetch for a basic island, I believe I would have kept the hand. Alright, whatever. Uh, uh, but the mana situation in this matchup is very important. If they have a Wasteland, uh, then you would just die. Oh, the good news is they didn't have another land. The bad news is they have a seven-card hand where they're discarding the hand size. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to play it out. But I'm pretty sure we're just... I mean, th this deck is really, really unfair when you're not playing Wastelands. So it's quite hard to beat. You kind of just have to sneak wins versus it. Because they are, they have to keep any seven card hand that has a bazaar, or any and any hand that has a bazaar. So they do end up keeping weak hands sometimes. But uh, Juju's a little, little too powerful a wizard for that. <laughs> I mean, we do have like a, a a nice little you know counter magic suite here, but it's it's not going to be good enough. All right, so my opponent Noxious Revival the Wasteland, so they now have an answer for Tabernacle. No, I don't really think you want to fight on a Wasteland angle. 
Uh, I would play a strip mine if I cut omniscience though. Yep, four master, four squee. Uh, I am going to try to expose this. I still think there's like a small chance we can win this game if like we had drawn, if we draw like on our next turn, we draw Atraxa. Um, and my opponent's hand isn't like exact. Like they just pitch snapback negation to hand size. They can only have seven cards in hand. Um, and we do have, you know, some counter magic. But now they have the wasteland for the tabernacle. They're going to obviously wait until my end step so I don't have a second tabernacle on them. Uh, yeah, it's just brutal, unfortunately. This is just how the matchup goes. Yeah, I, I get the urge to keep the seven card hand, but, um, you gotta use London. London didn't help us there, but it is how it is. My opponent's, like, pitching extra... Oh, they're gonna go for the mana situation. Interesting. My opponent's pitching extra, like, masters and squeeze to hand size right now. So, Omniscience lets me beat a Caracas. And so I would play a Strip Mine so that I could beat a Caracas without Omniscience. Um, they don't really, it's not really like a super relation in terms of like, I mean, and you also just get to have a Strip Mine for Bazaar, which is nice. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, uh, it's like one of the more polarizing uh, decks in the format. Uh, it's very, very good against certain decks and very bad against certain other decks. Does which deck not have Endurance? My deck or my opponent's deck? My deck cannot play Endurance because I am playing Oath of Druids. My opponent's deck does sometimes play in, uh, Endurance in the sideboard. My opponent just pitching Squeeze and Masters to hand size. Brutal. All right. Yeah, I mean, you do you. A little, a little late on all of this nonsense. Ugh. Tabernacle Oath of Druids uh, famously not exactly a great combo, but usually doesn't matter too much because you can just do it on their end step. Chalice on zero. It's kind of annoying, actually. I assume they have another Wasteland, right? Yeah. All right, this is my last turn to draw a track, so probably. <laughs> okay, that's a funny omniscience. <laughs> Doesn't do anything. I mean, my opponent's hand is probably like force, 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 mind break trap. So it doesn't really matter. Uh... I mean, my mocks will still get countered, right? <laughs> That's not how this works. All right. Uh, we'll do our last draw, and then we'll do the dying. We also know opponent kept uh, double Master of Death in their hand, so we know they have at least two forces. So there's not much point in doing the dying, but... For pride. Oh, baby, we're at second Bizarre Life. Yep. Yeah, I mean, this was another issue that we ran into uh, on the challenge stream.
I do think this build is now better against Squee. I do think Oath of Druids helps a lot. I think Oath of Druids is actually... Um, they had triple force. Yeah. Um, I think Oath of Druids helps the matchup quite a bit. It gives you a very fast play. I know that they have vigors and forces, but I, I do think that Oath uh, is definitely a, a boon for the matchup. So I think we made the deck better against Oath, but still, or better against Squee, but I, I don't think any build uh, that you make of Oath of Druids is going to end up, or of Show and Tell Oath of Druids, <laughs> uh, is going to end up being like great against Squee. It's just kind of the nature of the, the matchup. All right, round three. We're one and one now. Uh, we're up against Smirk, and we got a nice die roll win. What do we have? All right. Well, these are some pretty bad looking omniscience. If these two omniscience were preordains or Yogwills, would we keep this hand? We might keep if they're preordains. We wouldn't keep if one was a Yogwill. So, oh my! Hello, Magic the Gathering cards. Classic Forbidden Orchard Hand. I'm going to jam an Oath. I have the power, so I might as well jam it. I think Brian told me this only happens in 10 to 15% of hands, and I've had it like, <laughs> like eight times tonight. <laughs> Ooh, we got a Resolver. You don't have Vigor, do you? No, all right, so we're safe, we're safe. What do we got? What are we playing against? Show me some cards. Oh, I should not F6. Why am I F6ing? I have a mental misstep. <laughs> I kind of I kind of think my opponent's going to concede here. This is the power of both of Druids. Sometimes you just uh, do the thing. All right, opponent. How, how does this make you feel? <laughs> Needle on Grizzle. I did have a Revoker on Grizzle Ren today. That was fun. I mean, we can lose the game. It's not even uncommon to lose the game from here. Like, if my opponent were to go, I don't know, Black Lotus Mishra's Workshop Coveted Jewel, we would die. If my opponent were to go Black Lotus uh, Balustrade Spy, we would die. But uh, they didn't, so now we're winning. Target you. That's an Emrakul again. <laughs> they're off it. All right, they're off it. They can't be an Emrakul. Uh, what deck can't be an Emrakul? So that means they're not on combo. So my opponent told me a little bit too much information here because they told me they're not on combo and they have Wasteland in the deck. <sighs> Should we just board like their shops? I kind of want to board like their shops. I mean, they could be on something like Squee or Hollow Vine as well. That's the that's the downside here. Could be mono white. Mono white has a uh, solitude for Emrakul actually, so probably not mono white, unless my opponent doesn't know that you can solitude an Emrakul. I think the the hedge I'm going to make is I'm going to take Fluster out, and I'm going to take Misstep out. And I'm going to hedge with negation and vigors. No? And I'm going to hedge with snow covered forest, negation, and nature's claim. So the reason I'm going to hedge like this is forest is going to be good for against all wasteland decks. Negation is going to be good against, well, it won't be good against Agravine, but it will be good against Mono White and Shops. 
And mental missteps should be bad against things that are not... I mean, she's she not even that good against... It's, it's, like, only okay against Agrivine. I think this is the hedge I'm going to go with. I don't think putting in, like, a bunch of Vigors or a bunch of Ley Lines is, like, a very reasonable thing to do in this situation. But I do think putting in the things that are... Uh, I do think putting in Negation and Forest make a lot of sense. The claim is, like, just small hedge. I like this hand. This is like a, a, a beautiful example of why Atraxa is a nice card to have as your cheat creature. And it's because it's blue. It pitches to Force of Will. Mind Break against Mono White is hard to evaluate. I like Mind Break more against Aggro Shops. Um, but I do bring Mind Break on the draw against... Uh, both of them sometimes. It just depends on what cards you have in your deck. Alright, opponent has Mold of Six. We still don't know what our opponent is on. Um, if we see a Lotus, I'm inclined to counter it. Okay, Ancient Tomb. Okay, so it's shops. Now, what variant of shops? Okay, our hedge was quite good here uh, with our claim. Uh, I am going to force this one, but they likely have double sphere here. Um, I'm just going to pitch the Atraxa. I have an Oko. Oko is pretty good here as well. I think I'm going to fetch basic forest and probe is likely what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, not a bad mulligan from them. They were able to play one, two, three, four cards plus land on turn one and get us underneath a sphere resistance. I'm going to get a snow covered forest and I'm going to cast a taxi and probe. And their last card is, is fucking strip mine. Chat, how does this happen to me every time? It's unbelievable how this happens every single time I fetch a basic. What did they draw? They top deck that nettle cyst? Oh my god, it's doomed. Alright, well. <laughs> we drew an omniscience, so that's great. All right, what's your top deck this time? Wasteland? No! Yeah, shops players are different, man. They're built so different. They're, they're built so different. I mean, it's we're going to be on the play in game three, so it's not a big deal. They're just built so different. It's crazy. All right, if I draw a fetch land, the game is still on. That's an omniscience. It's an omniscience. All right, omniscience. Again, if they were preordained our Yogwill, still wouldn't have been good. If it was a strip mine, it would have been not great. What'd they draw? To the second creature, I lose. Ay, ay, ay. We're Arcbound Ravaging in the year 2023. What are we, Eric Virgo? What's happening? All right, well, we're dead in this game, unfortunately. My opponent having the strip mine top deck wasteland. Oh. I think it's just short in all ways. Highly unfortunate. Okay, it's fine. We we now know what we need to do. And what we need to do is plop the creatures into play and blow up all their stiff. No problem. Uh, we can get rid of Probe. And we can get rid of Merchant. Oh. Uh, just putting an Atraxa in play should just win. So there's not a huge reason to have an Omniscience. Putting an Emrakul in play also just wins. Uh, Probe and Misstep don't really do anything. It's nice to have Oko. Uh, is there anything else I want to change? It might be nice to have an Omniscience. No, it just doesn't matter. We just don't need an Omniscience. All right, let's do this. All right, now we're on the play in Game 3 against Aggro Shops. I consider any Shops deck with the, to be a great matchup with this deck. 
I mean, we are dedicating six sideboard slots to Nature's Claims and Force of Vigors. We are playing the two-mana win-the-game card against them. We are also playing the three-mana win-the-game card. We also are playing six Force of Wills, so... And, oh, yeah, not to mention there's Okos. So, uh, I, I like this matchup a lot. Obviously, it's still losable. Um... Okay. There are like some risks inherent with this hand, which is funny to funny to say. Um, this hand is good, and we're gonna keep it. But I've definitely lost games um, keeping these kind of hands against shops. We're gonna play around mind break trap. We're gonna go sapphire ancestral. I don't think I want to play turn one oath vampiric. I think that's not uh, the play I want to make here. Uh, oath vampiric doesn't always win the game. Uh, because of things like, uh, cage and that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I think I'm just gonna cast the, the natural cast of Ancestral here. I, I, I don't think that, like, Vamp, uh, Ancestral Oath is a bad line, Windex. I don't mind, I don't mind your line, and I don't even think your line is bad. I just think it's slightly worse than playing just a, a regular game here. And the reason is, I, I, there are just like a lot of ways where if you put an oath, they don't play a creature and they lock you out with spheres until they find a cage. Like, there are just ways it loses that I, I, I don't think I want to go down that path. I also don't really want to use my Lotus right now on a, a Vampiric Tutor. So, I don't, like, like I said, I, I, don't even, I don't even mind the line. I think if you, if you want to take that line, I'm, I'm not even upset with it. I just don't think I'm going to take it. <laughs> I could also get mental mental misstepped here, and I'll be sad. But hey, look, <laughs> it's one of them oath of druids. <laughs> chat's chat's used to this one. All right, your move opponent. We can actually, uh, not really, but, oh, where's a saga? That's a nice thing for me to blow up. Sure. Uh-oh. There's a cage. I'm just gonna let this resolve. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go to my turn and we're going to upkeep Vampiric Tutor for a Forbidden Orchard and hard cast Vigor on Cage and Saga. Man, that just feels unfair. Could technically hit Lotus Cage as well. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, I have Force, so I think, yes, I would hit Saga. It probably doesn't matter. I don't think it matters much either way, but I can't imagine what I'd be worried about off of this. I guess maybe like Trinisphere land cage, but even then I would still would rather... Mm. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. I have a real hard time not blowing up Urza Saga. It just it just feels good, you know? That Tinker? Oh, it's a walking ballista. 
Uh, this is fine. It's going to buy you a turn, I guess. I'll allow it. I guess if they follow up, they, they can't follow up with a strip mine here. So I actually might have countered if they had lead off of Lotus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they, they do is they, they shoot the uh, spirit token and they shoot me. So it, it buys them a turn. It's okay. They they use their land drop on that, so it's not a it's not a big deal. Uh, it, you cannot orchard again in my upkeep because the trigger will not go on the stack. Uh, this is fine. This doesn't matter to me. Uh, yield until end step, and make a spirit. And now we get a large creature in which my opponent will not be able to beat, and everyone feels good. Well, I feel good. Chat feels good. Oh, it might not feel good. Ah, oh, I would like an Atraxa, a Show and Tell, an Oath of Druids, a Jet, an Orchard, and a Force of Will. Sorcery, Instant, Artifact, Land, Creature, Enchantment. Oh, just missing Planeswalker. Only six cards. Oh, you're saying I could have waited and done it on my upkeep? Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right, chat. You're right, chat. Uh, I can just wait. And if they get rid of their creature, this thing will already have been on the stack. I could put a creature in play. Yeah. No, you're right. No, you're right. I, I I could have done that in a better way. True. All right, here we go. Two and one right now in our vintage prelim. We're up against Hank. Hank has been on a, a pretty nice tear with Mono White Initiative. Uh, Hank's version of Initiative I like quite a lot in comparison to previous versions of Initiative. Uh, and the reason being is uh, they have a very nice fixed mana situation. Uh, with Chrome Moxes, and they are playing four Chancellor of the Annex, which allows them to, to power through forces. Uh, this hand has some problems against Mono White, but I think it's still a keep, um, especially because we are at least able to play through uh, a Chancellor. Unfortunately, I don't have my main, uh, the Snow-Covered Forest in my main, so there's a Chancellor, um, which is really unfortunate. I would really have liked to... Uh, have a forest to fetch here. Well, the thing is, Ian, I think everyone's definitions of control are completely garbage. So <laughs> uh, everyone has a different definition of what they think control actually means. This is a, a nightmare situation for us, though. Chancellor plus Thalia. You just are running lands in this game. That is not running lands. So. I think we're going to lose this game. This is Cleric, and then an initiative creature. Oh, it's Archon, even worse. <laughs> we're doomed. So this is basically one of the best mono-white starts. If they follow up with an initiative creature, you basically can't get better than this. Uh, uncounterable Thalia with Chalice back, uh, a Chancellor back up into uncounterable Archon with Chancellor back up still. Like... All right. Um, I don't think we gain. I'm going to draw at least one more card here. Mm-hmm. 
All right. I mean, I, I would probably consider that close to the perfect mono white draw. Obviously, a black lotus always improves the hand, but our hand was a little bit sus, but I think it was still worth playing through. Like, if my opponent's turn one wasn't exactly Thalia Ch Chancellor, we actually get to play the Moxin with a basic. And we still would have to draw land, but we're on the draw. It's just kind of unfortunate, I think. Uh, we're already basically boarded for this matchup. Um, there's not that many things we can actually do. Um... Probably just going to leave Mental Misstep in for Swords, I guess. It's not great, but... Better than Fluster. I guess we could play Trap. That might be, might be better than Misstep. Okay. Tabernacle is not good against Initiative because they play so much fast mana. It just doesn't really slow them down at all. This hand is too slow. Let's try again. This is much better. I don't think I'm going to slam Oath here, though. Uh, I do think I will end up passing and letting them play a creature... Um, we can just get rid of one negation here. I think I'll wait once on this turn on this oath. Though Thalia is kind of annoying because I uh, can't really beat like uh, Thalia into Lauren. I think it's still worth the risk, though. Maybe we'll draw a Black Lotus. I guess I could just wait one more turn. That doesn't seem that bad. That should be fine. I guess it, I can. that exposes me to getting caverned. But... I still think it's fine. Uh, I guess if I get Archon here, I still am exposing myself to the exact same issue again. <sighs> Maybe I really was just supposed to play turn two Oath. Hmm. So my opponent's main way to beat Oath of Druids is they have Containment Priest and they have Lauren. No follow-up. Maybe they have a, a, a Containment Priest in their hand. Uh, I'm going to go fetch a basic island and cast an Oath. I mean, if they have a Containment Priest into uh, Lauren, then so be it. Then we have, uh, actually, we have the backup plan, right? Well, not, not against Containment Priest. We do beat, no, I mean, I guess we don't beat Lauren either. All right, never mind. We don't have backup plan. Okay, there was no Containment Priest. This is good. So as long as there's not Human Cavern plus Lauren, I like our chances. This does seem like another situation where we really don't... No attack is odd. I assume most people know exactly what deck I'm playing. <laughs> they are going to evoke a Solitude to kill their Thalia. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. A play was made. <laughs> a play was 100% made there. Mind break trap. Okay. Well. 
I can uh, counter something that's uncounterable now. That's a good draw. The privilege of playing blue. Kind of annoying to not draw a land because um, there are some downsides to show Intellitraxa here, but I'm still going to show Intellitraxa here. I don't have to. I guess I could not. What happens if I don't? Mm, I'm going to. No one can stop me. Oh, that's so good for us. <laughs> sure. The initiative creatures are pretty embarrassing, typically. Uh, merchant negation. So, Negation, Scroll, Jet, Oko, maybe I'll just do Preordain. Preordain, Jet, Oko. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a super fan of the uh, Traxa interface. But yeah, I mean, we absolutely could have gotten Containment Priest on that. Definitely could have happened. Not really that worried about it, though. Uh, okay, resubmit. I had some Nolrons that I used to have in the sideboard here that were pretty decent on the play. But I've also really invested heavily into mana in this one. Mana rocks. That hand blues. <laughs> I'm happy you're playing some magic over there, Lord <laughs> Beerus. This hand is garbage. They kept a seven Carter. Uh, oh my god, if I keep this hand, they're just gonna play a stupid Thalia and I'm gonna die. I'm doomed. Oh yeah, Chase the Mind Sculptor quite quite bad in the year 2023. Can I really mulligan this hand? I probably have to. I just like if they play any turn one card, I lose. And especially if they have a Chancellor. I can't I can't play this hand. We gotta go deeper. This hand's also so bad. <laughs> There's three omniscience in this hand. Oh, I thought I had it was on four. Uh, well, uh, this is worse. Again, though, the cards that these would have been, like Preordains and Yogwell, is not good. 2-2, two, two, Bread and Butter, Archon of Emeria. Well, that's a good draw. That's a great draw. A plus. Go deck. You did good. Good draw. <laughs> Think this is going to get wastelanded? Oh, no wasteland. Wait, is it not doomed? Oh, it's still doomed. 
Yo, are they gonna name Misty? Oh God, what if they name Misty? They'll name Oath, right? This card's so bad, but good. They can't name Misty here, right? Because if I draw a land, like a basic and slam an Oath, so bad for them. They gotta name Oath, right? Yo, imagine if we show and tell. I guess it won't be that good because there's an Archon in play. But still. <laughs> you you gotta name Oath here, right? Right? They're deep in the tank. It's a huge call. Could go either way. <laughs> oh, oh, survey says. Uh, Misty Rainforest is the name. What a savage. Can I get a basic? Can I get a basic? Fuck me, dude. I'm so unlucky. Oh, sad. Oh, now we're doomed. We're going to lose to anointed peacekeepers. Gross. Disgusting. I mean, my opponent didn't mulligan. What do you want from me? I, I mulligan to four, and my opponent had kept seven. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you want from me? <laughs> uh, yeah we kept a bad five i didn't really mean to keep it i thought i was keeping a four to be honest well i i i mean we had an omniscience in our hand it was a mold of four <laughs> i thought we were on four so i kept it but we were actually on five i probably would have gone one more down I mean, like I said, I don't really think that my, my mulligans were bad. Like, we just got unlucky on the mulligans. It's not that big a deal. I I think the mono ma white matchup is not, like, amazing, amazing, but it's pretty good. I would say this is a pretty good deck against mono white. Not this deck. That's a different deck. This deck. I don't know. Mono white, for the most part, just feels like you're coin flipping. Uh... And if you're, if you get some heads, <laughs> sometimes you land on heads. <laughs> um, okay, so we didn't like have, like every time I said Omniscience was bad, it was all the other cards we were going to replace it with were also bad, right? Like Preordains and uh, Yawgmoth's Wills. So I, that's like the only thing I was like super concerned about. And it didn't really show its head here. And it really hasn't showed up. In a lot of the uh, the leagues I've been testing, obviously not a great showing a two two a two two performance here. Um, squeeze always going to be tough, but losing to mono white is uh, continues to be kind of embarrassing. <laughs> not because of Hank. Hank's great, and I like their build a lot, but um, I just don't really think that mono white deck is quite is very good. Mm. My deck doesn't play removal though, so you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you should be keeping hands without fast mana. This is vintage. The game ends on turn one and turn two. If I'm waiting around on turn, you know, turn one, not doing anything, it's not a good sign, right? Anyways, um, I'm gonna keep playing around with this deck. Uh, I might try out this version over here where we have uh the omniscience is trimmed and we make some some adjustments. We get some preordains, get a Yogwell going, get a strip mine for Caracas and a needle for a Caracas and uh. And it is what it is. Uh, I think this deck is really strong. Like I said, I, I, in leagues, I'm like, uh, what's uh, four, four ones and a three, two? What does that end up being? That's 15 and, uh, and five. 
So not bad. What's that? 75% win rate? Pretty good. Considering I do pretty badly in leagues. <laughs> pretty happy. Um, I'm going to keep working on it. Cause I, I think, uh, I think something's here and I do think this card is broken. I think you know, it was pretty obvious when we got the card into play, just how good that trigger is and just how big a four, a seven, seven flying lifelink death touch, uh, vigilance creature really is. So, uh, more vintage content coming on this channel Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. I hope to see you then.